This segment brought to you by Kansas Wheat. Learn more at rediscoverwheat.org. Welcome back to Farm Factor. Kyle Bauer is with Shailene McNeil, a registered dietitian with NCBA. Hi, this is Kyle Bauer with Shailene McNeil. We're visiting in San Antonio. Um, She's executive director for nutrition research for NCBA. Am I close? That's, That's right. Nutrition research for NCBA. I'm an executive director. As I listened to your presentation in here, um, there was a lot of things that I agreed with completely, but it was the first time I'd actually heard people talk about young child nutrition, which included meat, older people's nutrition, which included meat. It seems to be an aha time that beef is politically correct again. Well, you know, beef brings great things to the diet, what we call across the life stages. So in the early years, that iron and zinc that babies really need is so critical. But then in the older years, you need that high quality protein and all that package of nutrients like the B vitamins, the bioavailable vitamin B12. So there's something at each life stage that beef brings, and we're really wanting to talk about that. The, the food pyramid, if you will, seem to, to be against meat in general, but it seems that people are starting to realize that we're probably a mistake. We see that a lot of people have very good outlook on beef intake in the diet. They love the way that beef helps make them feel. We know that the protein in beef is satisfying. So we have had negative guidance in the past and I think consumers are now realizing that when I include beef in my diet and I eat it in a healthy diet, I feel great and I get some of the nutrition outcomes that I'm looking for. So that had, we've seen nutrition on the comeback with beef. So how did this evolution of the food pyramid happen? I mean, was it science? Was it politics? Uh, What made that evolve? Our nutrition guidance, our nutrition recommendations, the dietary guidelines, those have been largely emphasized on a form of what we call weaker science. It's basically a type of research that looks at correlations and not causation. And because of that, beef often got a bad rap because it was looking at beef in unhealthy diets. But now through the checkoff research and where research in science is headed, we know that there are higher quality studies. We call them randomized controlled studies trials, those are gold standard studies, where we look at beef in healthy diets. And what we see is when you eat a healthy diet and you include frequent beef consumption, you see great health outcomes. Not only do you get the nutrition that you need, but you can lower your blood pressure, you can lower your cholesterol and have great outcomes. It appears there's a new appreciation also for the quantity of protein that one needs to consume. There is more research, some of it funded by the beef checkoff, others by other institutions that's beginning to show that we need more protein than we are getting in our diet, not just for basic nutrition, but to help satisfy our appetites, to maintain muscle as we age. There are a lot of benefits from increasing protein in the diet. There's not really any downsides from doing that either. So the more protein that you increase in your diet, maybe you cut back your carbs a little bit in place of that. And what we see is you can help offset the muscle that you lose, your appetite control is better. So it can be important for weight management, a lot of great health benefits with bumping up your protein in your diet. You know, you mentioned muscle, and we talk, and I'm getting older every day, which we all hope to. Yeah, exactly right. And um, it's becoming well known that uh, as we get older, it gets more difficult to maintain our muscle mass. We think that's all about exercising, but it's as much as anything about the amount of protein that we consume. It is both. The good news is that as you age, you can still build muscle. You can still maintain your strength. But not only do you need good exercise, you need high quality protein to pair that with. And because your body may not be quite as efficient at using protein as it was when you were younger, you might need a little bit more. And that is so important. So when we increase our protein, one of the things that's great about beef is is that it's a real nutrient dense source of protein. So for three ounces, you're going to get 25 grams of protein. That's a lot of protein in three ounces. So when you're older and you maybe want to eat a little less, it's easier where you can eat beef and really bump up your protein content and help offset that muscle loss as you age. We're visiting with Shailene McNeil and we're talking nutrition, specifically beef in nutrition. This is Kyle Bauer reporting from San Antonio. Thanks Kyle. After the break, it's this week's Kansas soybean update. Stay tuned.